here it is, the biggest embarrassment in my fish room. I have tried many things with this aquarium to get the algae under control from a two week blackout with absolutely no light, the tank was completely wrapped, to pulling everything out, scrubbing it, putting it back, replacing the substrate, daily water changes, everything except chemicals have been used on this aquarium. I even tried peroxide, which did work briefly, but it came back. So today I am going to resort to my favorite algae eater and just drop like a hundred of mono shrimp in here and see how long it takes to get things under control. So make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell on if you want to see the results of that experiment. That was quite literally 98 Amano shrimp that I added to the aquarium. We'll see how long it takes for them to clean this up. It is currently September 4th, so stay tuned for that. So as you can see, the bonsai have made their way onto the Penjang. Now those were always intended to be there, but they were lost during the install. And we thought that they had walked off with someone, but it turns out they were wedged deep up inside my lovely swivel chair somehow. We have no idea how. But anyway, that's not the point of today. Today we are adding the very first critters to the penjang and that is micro crabs now i'm going to add 25 to start uh, and then keep a second bag of them in another aquarium to have just in case um, now micro crabs are a super super teeny little critter from thailand and these are juveniles you might be able to see some on the green stuff I will be sure to give you guys a really good close-up here in a bit, but they only get about a centimeter max or about just under half an inch. Um, they're kind of interesting because they're a mix between a filter feeder uh, in that they utilize the setae or the hairs that grow all over their arms in order to collect particulate matter from the water column and feed themselves. And I've done a full species spotlight on them before, which I will make sure to link to. But for now, we are gonna add some crabs. Now, these are a fully aquatic species. They do not spend any time outside of the water. So they're not going to be climbing on this rock. I know a lot of you were excited about the idea of that. Um, I'm also not putting them into a quarantine tank simply because there's nothing in this tank. Um, it's important when handling these crabs to not, or to be very cautious to not get their legs stuck in netting. So I don't generally use a net. In fact, they're almost always attached to the shipping material. So I simply add that until they leave, until they climb off and then um, remove it or shake them off gently like I will here. And we'll take a closer look here in a second. When I net these to sell, I hand collect them and you have to be really, really cautious of where they are in the plant matter because it's very easy, as I mentioned, to um, injure them. And because they can be so tiny, it's important to really inspect things before discarding any plant matter or mesh that they may have been attached to. Let's take a closer look. Now, as I mentioned, these guys are exceptionally tiny. And because of that, they have an extremely low bio load Look at this one trying to be ferocious. 
Um, so, you know, adding 25 to this UNS 60S or essentially 10 gallon aquarium is not even going to make a ripple in the nitrogen cycle. Um, these guys have virtually no bio load which makes them really, really appropriate for profoundly small aquariums. In fact, I think they're one of the few critters. Oh, you can really see the hairs on that big female. Um, I think they're one of the few critters that are particularly well suited for an extremely small aquarium. Now, it's important to mention you're not going to see a whole lot of these guys. They do tend to hide in nooks and crannies, and that's probably because they are low man on the totem pole as far as the food chain goes. Um, I have found, I've had the best luck when I feed powdered foods to them um, that are dispersed all through the water column and they will stand there, extend their legs as you can see on the claws of this one in particular, the hairs, they extend those out and then groom themselves to feed. Really, really neat little critters, I think. And I have bred these in the past, but, and recently there was a new breeding report, but I don't know of anyone else that has had success. And I'm hoping we'll see it again in this aquarium. So I'm gonna grab some powdered food to add to this aquarium and we can see if they do what they normally do. This is just the beginning of stocking this really unique aquarium. I'm pretty stoked about these little crabs. It's been a few years since I worked with them. And uh, I think they're so cool. But again, I will be putting shrimp in here and possibly even fish in the future. We'll have to see. As with all my aquariums, this is a gradual process. So stay tuned for that. And thanks as always for your support, especially to my patrons that have stuck with me throughout my uh, infrequent or inconsistent postings there. <laughs>